Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I am gonna be doing a first impressions full day wear test of the new Surratt Perfectionist Concealer Palettes. And I have it in two shades. I have it in number two and number three because I just wasn't sure what was gonna work and if I would need one for under my eye, one for my face. So for playing around, I thought it would be good to have two options. I also purchased the accompanying brush. This is the Perfectionist Complexion Brush, and we're gonna be trying all of this new stuff out together. So if you are interested in hearing more about these concealer palettes, then just keep on watching. So here are the two concealer palettes. Uh, this one is number two, and this one is number three. Obviously three is a little bit deeper than number two. It's also a little bit warmer in tone. This one is a little bit more uh, I wouldn't even say it's very cool tone. It's just a little bit more neutral than this one. And we have two concealer options at the top. We have a lighter and a darker tone. And then the long strip at the bottom of each palette is like a little setting powder. So I was just watching the Surratt Beauty YouTube video on these new palettes. And it looks like he uses the lighter shade underneath the eye and then the darker shade uh, all over the face. And of course you can mix the two and kind of create your own shade if you feel like it's a little bit off. So I thought that was pretty cool. I know that the idea of like having to sit there and mix shades is probably not even intimidating for some people, but just, you know, more time than you want to spend on your concealer or if you simply just don't have a lot of time to put your makeup on. So I think I'm just going to go kind of straight into each pan and just see if any of them straight out of the gate kind of uh, match my skin tone. So I have the complexion brush that was released uh, along with these palettes. So I have um, Surratt foundation down. I don't have anything else. So let's go ahead and try these out. So again, I'm going to take the brush and I'm just going to dip it into the lighter shade here and we're going to start with my under eyes. So in the Surratt video, it looked like how he applied the concealer under the eye was he started by patting the concealer into place and really brought it right, right up underneath the lash line. I know some people kind of avoid that part of their eye, but I'm gonna give that a shot. So far, I'm loving this brush. The shape of this brush is, there's a little bit of a point there and it's perfect for this right here, <laughs> right up into the corner of your eye there. It is perfect for that. It also seems to be doing a great job. I'm just patting it across, maybe swiping it a little bit, but generally just kind of patting. And it seems to have blended the concealer in perfectly. I thought for sure that I would kind of be patting this on and then I'd have to kind of use my finger. Maybe if I add a little bit more or if I kind of mix the colors, I'd have to use my finger. But for now, this looks to be Pretty good. So I am using the lightest shade in the number two palette. I don't think I mentioned that. So I think that that is a nice shade for under my eye. It is maybe like a half a tick lighter than my foundation. So it's giving a little bit of a brightening effect, which is really nice. I'm thinking now that these are probably a little bit too deep for me. I may be able to use this like on my face in the sunnier months here. Not that it's never sunny in Vegas, but you know, like the summertime when my skin does get a little bit deeper or maybe for blemishes that I have on my forehead, which is naturally much darker than the rest of my face. But anyway, um, let's go back to this concealer and I'm just using my finger to kind of get a sense of the texture here. It's surprisingly light feeling and lightweight. You know, usually when I deal with pan concealers or concealers that come in a pot, they're usually so much thicker than concealers that are, you know, the just the creamy ones with the wand kind of application. Um, and even some pot concealers I find thicker than like stick concealers. But this one feels actually very, very thin. It's not, not that I put a, a ton on, but this has a really nice kind of thin texture. There's a little bit of tackiness there, which makes me think that it's gonna kind of stay put and that it's not gonna sink into my lines. It's also going going to, um, and this is something he mentioned, Troy Surratt mentioned in his video, that when you use it on your eyelid, it's going to make a really great um, eyeshadow primer. It'll really help shadow stick. So I'm just going to put a little bit more on. I feel like I can use a little bit more right underneath here. Wow, I have to say that looks really good right now. That tackiness that I was mentioning, I feel like you can kind of see that with the concealer. This isn't a very kind of matte concealer that goes down. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this shade 
underneath my other eye. I just want to see what this shade looks like and if it's just simply too dark for my complexion. So I only see a very slight difference. Uh, to be expected, there really isn't that much of a difference between these two shades, but I feel like this one actually matches me in tone a little bit better. This one is brightening, but I feel like it could look a little bit too cool. I think if I were being a little bit industrious and experimental, I would probably mix the two a little bit together just to get a little bit more of this peachiness in here but lighten it up with this one. All right, I've got three in my hand here and I'm wondering if I should even bother. You know, I have to say, I feel like the darker shade in two is the same as the lighter shade in three. Maybe the tone is a little bit different. Uh, in any case, I am gonna try the lighter shade in three and I'm gonna put that on my eyelid. I just wanna see how that shade works on my skin tone. I think this one looks a little bit darker than this one. I can't really tell. They're very, very similar. Yeah, I want to say this one is probably the closest to my skin tone. There's absolutely no brightening effect. I feel like it's pretty much like the color of my foundation. And like I mentioned, I'm using the Surat Beauty uh, Surreal Skin Foundation Wand, and my shade color is three. So I guess that makes sense that the number three palette would be very, very similar to my skin tone. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use the light shade in number three and put it all over this lid. I also wanna mention, these are very pigmented. I feel like I'm going into the pan like a little bit and it's covering a pretty broad area. I like that. I feel like I look concealed, like the skin around my eyes look perfected, but it doesn't look heavy or overly makeup-y in any way. All right, I'm gonna use some around my nose here. I'm gonna go back into this three uh, light shade and see how that works. Yeah, that looks great. I definitely like this color for uh, my face. So let me do a little bit of concealing here with some of my hyperpigmentation. All right, so far so good. It is not doing anything funky. It's not creasing up. It's not settling into my fine lines. I think we got some good shade matches here. I like the pigmentation. I love the texture. I'm really, really, not that I'm surprised because I think Surat Beauty's makeup line is always so unique, especially with its formulas, but I feel like with the pan concealer, they're always so, so thick and heavy. And this is pigmented. I feel like there's the coverage, but there's no heaviness. There's no like thick, heavy makeup feeling with these concealers, which is amazing. And the same actually goes for his stick concealer. I feel like stick concealers are also notorious for being very thick and his stick concealer kind of just glides right on also. So I do love his stick concealer as well. And I believe I have that in the shade too. And that one is definitely very, very brightening. All right, so next I'm gonna try uh, these setting powders and uh, I'm gonna use the large smoky eye brush. This is just a great kind of like under eye brush and I thought it would also just fit really nicely in the pan. So let me start with two actually. This is the one that has like the lilac-y uh, pink toned uh, powder. So I'm just gonna brush this um, right across. Picked up a nice amount of powder, but there's like zero kick up. And I know that was a lot of people's comments or concerns. They're like, oh, well, this is just gonna end up with a shit ton of powder in there. But so far, there's no kick up. So that may not be an issue. And being as meticulous as someone like Troy Surratt, I can imagine that he completely thought this through. So I'm not really surprised. Uh, but anyway, let me go ahead and apply this underneath my eye here. I'm also gonna apply this basically to this half of my face wherever I applied concealer, and then we can compare the two setting powders and see if we see any difference. Beautiful, I feel like it did definitely kind of like matte down that little bit of emollience that I could see with the concealer. I don't know if you can see the difference. So this doesn't have powder, this has powder. The powder is incredibly silky smooth. Wow, and it is, and there really is like zero kick up. 
there's like absolutely no powder left in there. So I'm just gonna take the brush and I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna put it right in the pan here and I'm just gonna go back and forth. And there's like no kick up. There's absolutely no kind of like powder left over in the pan. That is amazing. That is amazing. So if you're worried about powder getting into these concealer pans, I don't think that that is gonna be an issue. All right, let me wipe off this brush and we can go into the yellowy powder in number three. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just brush across here, pick up some product and sweep that across. Okay, I think I definitely like the yellow tinted powder on me more than the purpley. I definitely run into that problem. If I'm using too cool toned of a powder, it just ends up looking very ashy on my skin. So I think the yellow is a little bit more brightening. It kind of brings a little bit more life to my skin. All right, so there is the application of these concealer palettes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish up my makeup. I feel like if I make any more kind of observations after I've completed my makeup, I'll come back and kind of fill you in. If not, I'm just gonna put on my makeup. I'm gonna go about my day and then I will check back in at around uh, uh, lunchtime. Uh, oh, it, right now, I always forget. <laughs> right now, it's about 10 in the morning. So I'll check in probably about three hours, and then I'm going to leave my makeup on until dinner time, and then we'll do another check-in. I'm really dying to see how this concealer kind of lasts, holds up, whether it starts to kind of make my under eyes look aged or fade or do anything weird. So just stay tuned. So I just finished putting on my makeup. I don't have anything major to report before I do my first check-in, but I did just want to mention that as I was finishing up my makeup, I just took a really close Close look at my under eyes. I just feel like my under eyes look really, they don't look like blurred or soft folk. They just look really like smooth. So, um, well, I'll have all the information down below in my description box, what I have on my face, everything pretty much is Surat. So I'm gonna go about my day and I'll be back in a couple of hours to give you my first check-in. See you then. <laughs> Okay, it's about 2.30 in the afternoon, Whew. and I've had this makeup on since about 10 o'clock. Let's take a close look at what is going on here. So I'm seeing a bit of my lines being emphasized just a little bit, and it's like the big lines under my eyes. So that does happen quite often, but I feel like I have some concealers that do a little bit better of a job kind of like blurring out my lines. So I'm gonna zoom in here. I don't know if you guys can see, there's like, I have that one big like eye wrinkle there and it's uh, it's pretty prominent. <laughs> it's pretty prominent right there. And then this eye actually looks a little bit better than this eye because I have like the same kind of line there but I don't see it on this side. It is definitely not moving. All of the concealer is still there. I see, I don't see any fading. I don't see any sort of weird texture or any sort of like weird breakdown. And I feel like it's still doing a good job around my nose and I've been blowing my nose today too because my allergies are acting up, oddly enough. I wanna say so far that the pros for this uh, concealer is longevity. It like seriously has not budged at all. I think it's the combo of that concealer plus the setting powder. So I actually used this uh, yellow setting powder, the one that's in number three, this guy. I actually used it all over my face and I can see what a good job it's done setting like all of my makeup. But I don't think it's great if you kind of want to like blur or soften up any kind of fine lines under your eyes. I don't really think concealer is meant to do that anyway. I think you need to use some other products for that. But I do have some concealers, some radiant kind of concealers like the Clay de Peau and the Sicily. They're more like products that are meant to kind of brighten areas of your face. And I use those under my eyes and I tend to like what that does to my wrinkles a little bit more because they're so emollient, they're, they're really, really nourishing. They have kind of like this light diffracting action so that like it kind of blurs the appearance of the lines, but what you're kind of giving up is pigmentation. So I think if your priorities for your under eyes, that is, is kind of cover up and longevity, uh, so far, I wanna say these are great. If your priority is to kind of like blur under eye lines, kind of like soften up texture, this probably isn't gonna be for you. But we are only at the halfway mark, so I will be back around dinner time to kind of wrap this up and give you my final thoughts. I will see you then. <laughs> 
Hey guys, it is six o'clock in the evening. So I've had this makeup on for about eight hours. I started at um, about 10 a.m. this morning, actually a little bit before, <clears throat> excuse me. I, uh, I'm just, I'm making dinner and <laughs> I don't know, whenever I cook, I have to snack while I'm cooking. It's weird, it's like, Michelle, the food is coming. Like why? Anyway, I was just inspecting my face and not much has changed since my first check-in. I feel like this one wrinkle here, and I'll try and zoom in here, this one wrinkle here that I thought was like a little bit emphasized at, uh, when was my check-in, like two o'clock, uh, 2.30, it, it looks the same. So it hasn't gotten worse. Uh, what I find amazing is the longevity. Again, there's absolutely no fading, no budging, no, uh, it's not like turning into anything weird. It's, there's no texture. Like everything has just stayed, like stayed put, absolutely stayed put. So that is pro number one. I think the longevity is there. And I haven't had one of those days of which I have plenty where I'm just kind of at home and I'm working at my desk or whatever. I actually run around quite a bit today. Like I went out to lunch. I went to the supermarket at around four o'clock, which is like the worst time to go the day before Thanksgiving, just FYI. And so, so I've been out and about and I was just cooking, like I said, and it was hot. So I would have expected to see a little bit of deterioration, maybe kind of start to see a little texture pop up, start to maybe see a little fading around where I placed it uh, most heavily, which would be like right underneath my eye here, but I don't see anything. And I haven't touched up my makeup at all. I very rarely touch up my makeup during the day because I'm that lazy. And the concealing around my nose. I've been continuing to blow my nose. I don't find, what's on my lip? Um, I don't find, maybe like right here, I see a little bit more redness underneath my nose, but around my nostrils, I feel like has stayed pretty concealed. And again, nothing odd. The concealing on my face, like I have a pretty big um, hyperpigmentation spot there that is pretty much still concealed, nothing weird going on there. So I am really impressed with the longevity of this. Now, if you're someone like me and you like kind of a brightening, highlighting, soft focus kind of, you know, light coverage kind of concealer, this isn't it. This is more of like a workhorse kind of concealer. It definitely has a lot of pigmentation, so it's going to cover dark circles. It's definitely gonna be long wearing. The setting powder that's included in each compact is definitely going to give it like a more matte appearance, even though the concealer itself has a little bit of a tacky, um, like a, just the slightest bit of emollients you can kind of see, but once you put the setting powder on, it pretty much, it's like completely blanked out. It's like a total matte. So I want to say this is kind of like a makeup artist's like best friend. I like the idea that you can like mix and match the shades. Um, I like the idea that it's like long wearing, that it's hard working, and I feel like that is very much geared towards makeup artists. For the everyday wear, I mean, I think it's great also, obviously, if you have stuff to camouflage, if you have stuff to cover up, I think it's wonderful. I don't know if the everyday person is going to mix to kind of get their perfect shade. So I think it's a matter of figuring out what your shade is gonna be and just sort of go with that. So if you feel like you match me in like foundations and you only wanna get one, understandably, I would just say get two if you are a little bit cooler, get three if you feel like your skin is a little bit warmer. And then this brush, I think is great. I think it worked perfectly underneath the eye. It works really well with the product. It's obvious this was created with this in mind. It just really applies it nicely. When I was applying it and you guys saw, it just really blended it in. Usually, especially when I use a brush, especially when it comes to concealer, I'll use the brush, I'll do everything, and then I always go in with my finger. I feel like I have to. I have to kind of smudge out the edges or I feel like I just need to press it in a little bit further. I didn't really feel like I needed to with this brush. It kind of really did it all on its own. It's sort of like a pointy fingertip. Um, so that is pretty much it for this full day wear test. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you have any questions down below in the comment section. I hope I covered everything. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel down below. I would love to have you as part of the family here and I will see you in my next video.